me to my bigger point about quarterbacks right now in the NFL and the NFL draft. I feel like this has been a year specifically that's very quarterback driven. A lot of quarterback questions here. Lots of quarterbacks coming up in this draft, which we had said that we don't really see happening in 2022. We're not really sure that there's going to be that many. And then specifically kind of talking about Jimmy Garoppolo, what are your guys' opinions on that? I know that we talked about it a little bit earlier, but like they get the number three pick. And like we had said, all of those should go to quarterbacks. Those top four picks are probably going to be for a quarterback. Um, And so what are the 49ers planning to do now? What do you guys think? Andrew, we'll start with you. Yeah. With with Jimmy Garoppolo, it's interesting because I feel like the Niners are kind of taking the approach that the Kansas City Chiefs had when they drafted Patrick Mahomes and they still had Alex Smith and they felt like, all right, we have Alex Smith for now, but he's kind of a bridge uh, until we feel Mahomes is ready. And then it obviously worked out for the Chiefs, but I can't think for me, I think at, at that point in Alex Smith's career, Jimmy Garoppolo is not at that point. He's not in the back nine of his career. He's not, he, that's not the case for him. He was just in a Super Bowl not too long ago. And I have to think that for him, it's got to be nerve wracking knowing that not only you're coming in as a starting quarterback, but you have a rookie quarterback breathing on your neck right now. And at any point in time, they are going to make the decision to leave, to go with him and you will end up either being the backup quarterback or you'll have to find a job elsewhere. So I think it puts very much a superfluous amount of pressure on Jimmy Garoppolo. Cause now, I mean, how Chris, how can he come into this season, you know, ultra confident or just at least a hundred percent sure that the job is his, no matter what happens, it's gotta be like walking on eggshells. If he starts making mistakes, if injuries play a part, on the defense or on the offense and they get out to a one and four start, something like that. Jimmy Garoppolo is going to take the brunt of the criticism for that. And I have to think for him, it's got to be an uneasy feeling going into this draft, knowing that at that number, what that number three overall pick, you're going to watch your team draft your replacement. Yeah. And I think it's funny how history would change if he, Got a little more air under the ball to Emmanuel Sanders. Yep. There, there's a ball that that almost gets into Emmanuel Sanders' hands that would have won them the Super Bowl. Um, and maybe we're not talking about this at all, but we are, and that's because he was not very good last year. And I think it's it's very different, you know, than than the Packers drafting Jordan Love because, or the Chiefs drafting um, um, no, Alex, Patrick, Mahomes. Patrick Mahomes. Thank you. Um, because that those are later in the in the draft. I think when you look at the Chiefs, they're like, oh my God, this guy's still available. Like, let's go. Let's do it right now. This guy's a superstar. They saw it. Nobody else really did. They were able to get him. Packers, it was later in the draft. Yes, they had a million other needs. We can talk about that draft pick till the cows come home. Um, and how right now it doesn't look so good. But obviously they did the same thing with Aaron Rodgers and Brent Favre, and that worked out for them. So who knows? But they had a lot of other needs and they didn't fill them. And they got Jordan Love, um, but Aaron Rodgers had the best season of his career. I don't, or one of. I don't think that that's going to happen with Jimmy Garoppolo because you're looking at a team who is actively searching for your replacement. When the Packers came, when Packers turned to draft, they're like, "Oh, on our big board, Jordan Love's the best player available. Our quarterback is 36, 37 years old, and we haven't gotten to a Super Bowl in 10 years. We're going to pick a quarterback because we don't know what's going to happen." He had an MVP season. They still didn't get to the Super Bowl, but they had an MVP season. With San Francisco, it's we, – yeah, we were just in the Super Bowl, but he wasn't that good in the Super Bowl or in the playoffs. It was mostly our running game. And they had a terrible season. Granted, injuries were a bear to that team. My goodness, especially those two games in the row at Meadowlands. And now they're actively searching for that guy. They are trading up. If, if they drafted Trey Lance at 12, it's a completely t- different story. And I know it's a little bit silly, but it's a completely different story to me. Um, if they draft Trey Lance at three as opposed to 12. So I don't know. I, I think that Jimmy Garoppolo ha- is, has one foot out the door. How could you not? And, and his, the team that drafted him has a need a quarterback, even though they just signed Cam Newton. To me, they still have a need a quarterback, and I don't think that Bill Belichick actually believes in Cam Newton. Um, so that's the easy speculation, but it's the speculation I'll make because uh, when Bill Belichick drafts a guy, that's how you know he has a lot of faith in that guy. And that's not always right. You know, the wide receiver they drafted, whose name is escaping me, um, first round, and they just let him go. 
I don't know. He stunk. Anyway, I don't remember what his name was. He was terrible. But it doesn't always work out. But he clearly had a lot of faith in Jimmy Garoppolo, and he could certainly trade for him uh, this this uh, next, this offseason or next offseason. We'll have to see. Yeah, I think that it kind of – I don't know. I think that this is the overarching theme of this year is that organizations don't really seem to have – that many great relationships with their quarterbacks. I feel like Russell Wilson, Russell Wilson, Deshaun Watts, and Jimmy Garoppolo, all of these guys are a part of a team that they don't really feel like they're kind of a part of. Um, and so I feel like for Jimmy Garoppolo, he's 29. He's not that old. It's not like he's, like you said, it's not like he's 37 on his way out. You know, he still has lots to go. And so to see your team pick somebody who you know is coming for your job, I think that that puts enormous pressure on him. And I don't know that he'll be able to perform under that pressure. I mean, he wasn't incredible to begin with. Um, And so I'm, but I think that it kind of speaks to like, if your organization and your team doesn't feel like they have that much confidence in you and it doesn't feel like that they are really going to be there to support you, like Russell Wilson had spoke out about, like Deshaun Watson had spoke out about, it makes for a very uncomfortable quarterback situation, which I think in turn trickles down and, kind of messes up your entire organization, your entire um, frontline locker room talk. I think that all of it is going to be really affected by having that guy in the center who maybe feels like he isn't wanted there. And he feels like he is trying, people are trying to kick him out. I think that that's going to affect his psyche. And I think that that's going to in turn affect the way that he plays and the entire 49ers team as a whole. And as a result of it. Nikhil so, Harry, by the guy, by the way, was the Nikhil Harry, yeah, yeah. Arizona State, I believe, if yeah. not mistake. But I will say this though: we talk about those who are are being negative, negatively effective. How about Bill Belichick? He's probably sitting in his lair right now in the basement. His dog is sitting in a chair in front of a laptop watching probably doggy videos, maybe Caesar Milan, something like that. While Bill Belichick is just sitting back. Uh, you know, doing the whole little uh, wh- wh- who's the evil guy from The Simpsons? I just can't think of him off the top of my head. <laughs> Mr. Burns, yes, he's like excellent. That's Bill Belichick right now. He is hoping wh- what did San Francisco give the Patriots for Jimmy G? I believe it was a second round pick, if I'm not mistaken. Could the Patriots say, Hey, you know, you gave us a second round pick, we'll give you a second round pick right back, call it even Stevens, you give us Jimmy G back because I don't think Cam Newton is the long term solution. So, if you're Bill Belichick, you're kind of sitting back and you want this to devolve into chaos, you want the Niners and, and Jimmy G. To, to not part ways amicably so you can come in and say, you know, we'll take him off your hands for a conditional fourth round pick. You know, don't worry about it. We got your back. So I, I think if you're Bill Pelichek, you're kind of sitting pretty from now until the draft. And even after the draft, no matter what happens, I think when the Niners are fielding calls for Jimmy Garoppolo, the Patriots will be right there on line one. And I think they'll ultimately be the ones that snag Jimmy G out of San Francisco. 